Hi everyone. Today we're going to be looking at the BRX or Bricks Do More PLC High Speed Input Pulse Catch. Now the High Speed Input Pulse Catch will set an output that can be seen by the PLC ladder logic scan in response to an, in an input pulse. Inputs that are too fast to reliably be seen by the ladder logic scan time will be seen. Now the Bricks Do More series of programmable logic controllers has built in high speed inputs. These inputs can function in counter, timer, or pulse catch modes. Every CPU will have either 6 or 10 high speed inputs or HSI available depending on the model. These inputs can be used for input frequencies up to or from 0 to 250 kilohertz. And 250 kilohertz represents 250,000 input counts per second that can be counted from devices connected to your PLC like an encoder. Due to the speed of the inputs, they function on the Bricks Do More PLC asynchronous, asynchronously with the PLC scan time. We will continue looking at the high speed inputs on our Bricks Do More PLC by looking at the pulse catch mode. Now the pulse catch mode will be set up using the Z phase of our incremental encoder. Pulses will be counted using the in input directly in the ladder logic and using the pulse catch bit. Comparisons will be made between the two counts and the output will be turned on when they are different. So let's get started. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there'll be links in the description below that will start you at video one. There'll be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So up on my screen here, you will see that uh, we have our um, incremental encoder, which gives us an A, B, and a Z phase, and a Z phase is a pulse every 360 degrees of our encoder. And this is the same encoder that we have looked at before. And looking at the way it's going to be wired to our PLC or our BRICS PLC, you will see that we have our zero volts here, which will be tied to the zero or the blue of our uh, TDRA incremental encoder, which is NPN open collector. Then we have our brown wire, which is our power source, which goes to 24 volt. And that's also feeding into the common of our PLC input. This is the Bricks Do More DC input. So it's uh, anywhere from 12 to 24 volts that I can accept. So because we have an NPN uh, syncing output of our encoder, we'll have a sourcing input of our PLC. Then we have our phase A is our black wire going into uh, X0. Um, X1 is our output B, which is our white wire of our encoder, and our orange wire is output Z, which is what we'll be, take, uh, be using in our program here, which is X2. So that is our wiring of our incremental encoder to our BRICS uh, controller here. So next what we'll do is take a look at the high speed input pulse catch setup. And to do that, we'll look at our um, Do More Designer uh, software here. And on our software, what you'll notice is uh, the first thing we'll do is go into our uh, system configuration and we can get there several different ways. We can use the tools. Under tools, under the project browser, we can select it. We can select configuration over here or we can go to PLC and then system configuration. Either way, we'll get you to the same location in which we have our system configuration. Then we go to our BRICS local I.O., which is what we are. We're going to look at the CPU itself. And we can either select the high speed I.O. right here, or we can select the high speed I.O. button located right here. So let's select that button. And you can see we're going to be using the function three, high speed counter three, pulse catch. And there is our, uh, our selection here over on the tab saying pulse catch. And we have our device name, which is the name of our heap file or program structure that we're going to be reading into the PLC. Then our high speed input itself, we're using X2, which is Z phase of our incremental encoder. You can see that we can select any of these uh, inputs that we have on the actual controller itself. So we've wired it to X2. Then we want the input uh, pulse catch. And um, we have our pulse direction. We can have a, a positive or a negative. So we're going to use the positive. Now our minimum width would be the minimum width that we're going to have for this input in order for to activate uh, the 
output pulse. So we're going to use zero so it'll do, be as fast as it can. Then we have our out pulse output width and we're going to, it can be zero milliseconds or you can specify milliseconds that will uh, be on for in the PLC program logic. So in, during the scan time, we're going to leave it at zero for our single scan. So what this will do is when it receives a pulse, it will turn on a bit for one scan within the uh, PLC in order for the program to detect it and do something with that data. So that is, um, and then we have more information here if we want uh, more information about our actual uh, pulse catch input. So we'll just hit cancel there and we can hit OK here. Now going back to our setup, we also can look at our input filters of our inputs and these are the discrete input response times. We have the first three set for 250,000 hertz. So that's the maximum we can actually bring in. And if we're looking at the specs of our incremental encoder, it can only do electrically up to 200 kilohertz. So we're well within that range. So we're good. We cancel there and we hit OK. And then once we have that configured, we can then uh, download this configuration into our controller. And when we do that, Remember when we set up the um, high speed input, we also have this heat function, we would, we would have that name. So what we want to do is take a look at it. So we go to configuration under memory, under IO, and then specialty IO, you will see that high speed counter timer three is now programmed. And all we have is our bit saying um, pulse catch output. And then we have our output time that's available if we're going to um, do a time sequence on that. So it's going to it's going to then read that input pulse bit. That's the one we want to uh, pick up in our program. So that is the setup of our pulse catch on our high speed counter. So looking at the program, we'll move this over here. And on the program side itself, you'll see that we have added a couple of different rungs. The first one here, we have an always on flag. We have our Z phase of our encoder coming directly into the PLC, and it's going to count up on D0. So it's gonna increment that every time we have a pulse. The second one here, pulse catch output, this is our high speed input pulse catch, and it's gonna implement D1. Now, if there are, are they not equal, then Y3, will then come on indicating that we have differences between the two. Then we have C0, which then will move zero into D0 and D1, basically resetting our differences here. So that is our program. And we will actually then um, save that and download it as we've seen right here already. And what we'll do is next, if we take a look at the the actual scan time of the PLC, which is available within the, the Bricks Do More PLC, we can hit the info button here, or we can take a look at the system info located right here, or we can go PLC and then we can go system info information. When we do, what you'll notice is that we have our minimum, our average, and our maximum scan time of our PLC currently, and we can then reset those if we wish. So that's how you get their scan time. So that pulse has to be at least uh, 200 or 300 uh, microseconds in order for the PLC scan time to see it. But because the high speed inputs operate asynchronously with the PLC, then it'll pick up a lot quicker. Now, what we can do now is take a look at our actual hardware. And our hardware, what you'll notice is here is my Bricks Do More PLC. And we are connected currently to our software using our Ethernet connection. And we have our encoder right here. And it's wired in to our uh, first three inputs. So it's A, B, and Z phase, which is X2. So we're picking up on X2 on our actual program itself. So let's take a look at uh, 
our data view and our data view is going to actually um, show us the actual inputs. So here's my direct count input. So this is directly from the PLC scan. This is my input catch. And this is my difference, whether it's on or off or whether that Y3 is actually on. So I have the, my encoder attached to a drill. So I'll start spinning it. All right, we'll go slow at first. And what you'll notice is that we count one and they're both all the same. You can speed up a little bit here. Two and three which is all good if we're within a speed. But when we start increasing that speed, right, you will see that again, not too bad, increases some more. And at one point, what you'll see is that we're gonna have pulses coming in faster than what the scan time can pick up. And that will give us a, a large difference between the two. So we'll stop that right now. And what you'll notice is that now we have uh, on our input, it only picked up 52 pulses because it missed some of those input catches. But on our input catch pulse, on our high speed, we have 66. So very straightforward to implement our input catch pulse uh, bit that we can use later on in our program. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or your one for ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.